In this video I'm going to share some very important hidden mechanics, advanced tips and things you didn't know about Helldivers 2. So before we dive into it, I really need to stop making that pun, <laughs> make sure you've checked out part 1, my ultimate beginner guide of the 12 things you need to stop doing to get better at Helldivers 2. And once you're around level 5 and you're familiar with the basics, this video is the perfect stepping stone to help you really understand the game on an expert level. So without further ado, let's jump into tip number one. To kick off the video, firstly, you want to keep an eye out for these partially hidden cargo containers, as their doors can be blown off, revealing hidden loot. They can be all over the place, so always try and keep an eye out for them. They won't necessarily always be at minor places of interest, they could be anywhere. And as an example of what you might find, this one contains some samples and a special weapon. So always keep your eyes peeled because there is no indication for them whatsoever. They are very subtle and easy to miss. Tip number two is a way to complete the artillery sub objective very, very quickly. Once you've activated it and you have found a shell, if you keep dropping it and picking it up in quick succession, you'll be able to fly towards your objective and load them up very, very quickly. I've heard that if you're skilled enough, you can kind of drop them above you and they will balance on your shoulders and your chest and you'll be able to sprint with them balancing on your face. I haven't managed to get this to work, but apparently that's the thing you can do to make this even quicker. This way, that artillery will be loaded in record time and ready to use for the rest of the mission. And another side note for you, actually, before we move off the artillery, just in case you didn't know, the shells that you load matter. So try to make sure you're loading the ones that are most beneficial for your current situation, especially if you find a mini nuke. Always grab that one. It is ridiculously powerful and can easily one-shot even large nests. Tip number three and another thing to keep your eye out for is these unexploded nukes. If you shoot them, you will trigger a few second timer and when they explode, they will trigger a gigantic explosion. Just make sure you're very far away. As my friend very kindly demonstrates for us here, he gets absolutely obliterated but takes half of the Terminid army with him, including one-shotting a charger. If you are lucky with your positioning in relation to your enemies, you can take out huge waves of even the strongest enemies with a stray unexploded nuke. So if you come across one of these during a particularly tough mission, try to remember the location of it just in case you need to run back to it and enlist its help in destroying the bug army for liberty and democracy. Tip number four is a movement technique. As you can see, this cliff is very steep and just trying to run up it, you will slide back down again. However, with the power of the dolphin dive, you will be able to scale most surfaces that you wouldn't ordinarily be able to climb. To do this effectively and to stop yourself from sliding back down, hold the sprint button and spam the dive button. This way you will get back up from the dive as quickly as possible and you won't slip down too much. And in just a few short dives, you'll be at the top of most cliffs, which you otherwise definitely should not have been able to climb. Tip number five is about the orbital laser. There is a reason this thing has limited charges. It is so insanely powerful. It lasts for ages and can easily take out multiple charges or a bile titan with just one use. Because of how powerful the orbital laser is, you may wonder why this unlocks earlier than the orbital rail cannon and is cheaper. The reason for this is because it only has three charges, and if you didn't know, the charges are shared throughout your whole team. So use it wisely and communicate to make sure you are not wasting these three charges. When you get to extreme difficulty and beyond, you can easily encounter up to half a dozen Bile Titans in one mission. And at that point, three charges does start to seem quite limited. So even though this is ridiculously powerful, easy to avoid and lasts so long, it may be worth using things like the Eagle rocket pods or the rail cannon instead. That being said, it's absolutely fantastic on the shorter missions and on easier difficulties. It's definitely one of my most recommended stratagems. Just as I say, be warned that the charges are shared. So what you might want to do is just have one member of your team bring the orbital laser or you're effectively wasting a slot tip number six and the next thing you want to keep an eye out for is broken drop pods 
you'll see them sporadically opening and closing like this. And if you blow them up, they can be destroyed for extra loot. I've only found and destroyed two so far, and they both dropped special weapons. So I think special weapons is the only thing that can be dropped by them. But please let me know in the comments if you have destroyed any broken drop pods and if they dropped anything different. And I promise you, this is the last of the tips in this video where I'm telling you to look out for additional things. These, the cargo containers and the unexploded nukes are the only three things that you need to keep your eyes peeled for that you may not have already been aware of. Everything else is a lot more straightforward from here. No more surprise items to have to keep track of. From here on out, the rest of the video is just juicy information and things you probably didn't know. Now let's talk about the importance and the power of radar. Most of you probably already know that almost all maps will have radar as one of the secondary objectives. One of the first things you want to do is find it. And you won't see this on your map, you will need to use your eyes and scout around. You can usually see the radar dish from pretty far off. So as long as you're fairly central in the map, you should be able to see the radar dish. Find it and go there immediately. This will show you all bug nests and points of interest, etc. once you have completed it, making it far easier for you to plan your route and efficiently clear the rest of the mission without wasting any time. I'm sure we've all been there before. Getting lost, or worst of all, getting ganked and killed again and again because you're completely out of position can be so frustrating, and the radar can really help to nullify that. And even more importantly, and also radar related, tip number eight, which I'll kind of just combine into this as tip 7.5, is that you can actually align the radar very easy even when playing solo. For tip number 7.5, if you didn't know, when you are realigning the radar dish, listen carefully and there will be an audible ping when the radar is aligned correctly. And if you move it too far and you overshoot, there will be another noise to suggest it is now back out of alignment. I'll let that play out again without me talking so you can hear it. And once you've done that, you can go back, activate the tower, and that objective is now complete. Now that you have activated the radar tower and all of the unexplored minor places of interest have appeared on your map, it's time to go and start visiting them and gathering all of that juicy, tasty loot. And as for tip number nine, I'm not sure if this is a bug or not, but some of these minor places of interest will stay unexplored even once you have looted everything. If a minor place of interest hasn't been completed, it will show up as a diamond gem on your minimap. However, once you have completed it, it will show up as this icon here, a diamond shape with a bullseye underneath it. This means that place of interest has now been fully explored. And no matter how much I comb through certain places of interest, I cannot find any additional loot and that icon will not change. Now, I believe this is because there are certain areas that are there just for lore and there will be things you can interact with that will give you a bit of flavor text and insight as to what happened and I believe that is why these places of interest stay uncompleted. So if you are happy that you've thoroughly explored the area and it's still not showing as completed, don't worry, move on. I'm pretty sure that's because this is just a lore location. Tip number 10 is to use plants, spores, and various other fungi to blow yourself to safety. These come in different forms on different planets. But these cloud spewing spores here, if shot, will propel you in whichever direction you were stood at the time. So as a last resort, if you are being ganked by enemies, you can shoot one of these to propel yourself to safety. They will also stun and propel all enemies in the vicinity to give you even more time to stim pack and run away once you land. They are of course going to hurt you as well and they are a bit dangerous, but usually the alternative is death and taking an impromptu skydiving lesson without a parachute is genuinely the preferred option to being eaten by giant bugs. And now that you know how to use these spores both offensively and defensively, the one exception to this rule is if you are using a shield. If you are using either the shield that you can place down or the personal shield, as you can see here, if you are using the personal shield generator and you shoot a spore, nothing will happen to you. This is perhaps even better because you can freely and safely run up to these spores, wait for the enemies to surround you, then shoot the spore to stun them all. 
Tip number 11 is to pay attention to the day-night cycle. This is a thing that exists. Between 6am to 6pm will be day missions and 6pm to 6am will be night missions. So depending on your preference, use this information wisely when selecting your next operation. However, that isn't the primary purpose of this tip because most people probably already knew that. However, if you start a mission at around 5.30 or 5.40 p.m. and you are there for too long, it will become nighttime. The day-night cycle affects you even if you are already in a mission. So as we're wandering around this mission here and I'm playing around with my pathetic little flashlight, this is a mission that I started in the day because I much prefer daytime missions. However, as soon as it hits 6 p.m., wherever you are, the sun will set rapidly and you will have to complete the rest of the operation in darkness. So when selecting your missions, don't just consider the current time. Consider what time it will be there in roughly 45 minutes, because that's how long you could be on the planet. Before we move into the final three tips, I would just like to implore you, if my first couple of Helldivers videos have been helping you out, please consider subscribing to the channel because it helps YouTube to promote us and it helps our community to grow bigger and bigger. We are getting ever closer to that 200,000 subscriber mark. It's completely free to do and it takes two seconds of your time. And for anyone that has done, thank you so much. Okay, and as for tip number 12, this is to always go after any glowing yellow beam that you see projecting down from the sky. These will always lead to another form of requisition drop pod, and they quite often contain either super credits or war bonds, both of which are very rare and very important to stockpile for juicy items from the store in the future. Super credits in particular are the premium currency, and I believe this is the only way to get them without paying for them. So always, always beeline it to them yellow beams. They are very important and practically invaluable. And also as a little bonus to this tip, you're getting so many bonus tips today. If one member of your party loots some super credits or some war bonds or whatever it may be, that will be given to all members of the party. So don't worry if someone is a loot goblin and they're stealing everything. You will all get the war bonds, the credits, the requisitions, whatever it is they've looted, that is given to all of you. Tip number 13 is another bug that you might want to be aware of. I don't know if it only affects PC. However, when you do have the map open and you're trying to ping, if you have your grenades equipped, you will throw your grenades and it can leave you in a very sticky situation. So please just make sure you've got either your primary or your secondary weapon equipped before you try to put a ping on the map because otherwise you will be throwing grenades at yourself and your friends. However, the good news is, now that you are armed with this information, if your friends don't know about it, the next time you accidentally blow them up, you can use this as the excuse. Just say, oh, no, no, look, I, I just encountered this bug. If you uh, if you equip your grenades and then try and ping on the map, look, see, it, it just throws it. It wasn't my fault. It was this silly bug, or feature as the developers would probably call it. And the 14th and final tip for this video. When you are a very high level and you have most of the stratagems unlocked, it is very hard to narrow it down to just four. So my advice, if something has to give, remove your special weapon first, as there is so many ways of gathering loads more in the missions. You've got the cargo containers and the broken drop pods. You've got areas of interest. You've got side objectives. Sometimes you just find them in nests. There are so, so many special weapons scattered around that if you need to drop something from your arsenal so that you can bring all of the eagles and all of the orbitals that you want, remove your special weapons first because you can always gather them when you're in the mission. And that, my friends, is the 14 advanced tips that I had for you today. I hope you found at least something useful. And armed with all this new information, go forth and fight for Super Earth, for liberty, for democracy. And with that, my friends, all that is left for me to say is thank you so much for watching. I hope you have an amazing day, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.